Okay, um, the project for today, we still have probably close to four feet of snow in the uh, outdoors there. We've got 25 or more centimeters um, a couple of days ago. It's the 20th of April here, so spring is still uh, still not coming here for us. But anyways, um, I've been looking for a new backpack. Um, I like the rustic old ones. I want something out of canvas. I want um, something strong and durable. Being in the northern part of Ontario, Canada, the far north of Ontario, Canada, um, travel out here is you know it's pretty rustic. Um, a lot of it is bushwhacking through dense bush. Travel in four wheelers and boats and canoes. So you know you need a pack that can take um, some sort of some sort of abuse, even though you try to take care of it. Um, the nearest town where I can go to get any supplies, whether it's groceries or um, gas for the vehicles or anything, is uh, about 40 kilometers away, or 25 miles each way. Um, it's not a real big town, so the, so the selection there, uh, the variety is, is not that great. Um, a bigger community where I can go and get uh, a fairly decent selection is about 230 kilometers away. 160 miles uh, each way so you know you're looking at double that round trip and uh, it just you just don't go there all the time so I looked on Amazon there is a post office in the front room of a house not far from here so uh, Amazon's delivery is pretty decent and uh, they do have some packs in there uh, and some of them are canvas but the better quality ones are pretty costly you know you can get up into the you know, three, four hundred dollar range in a real hurry to get a good quality one. So I decided what I would do would be to um, pick up some canvas, and uh, this is um, painter's drop cloth, uh, and it's a, I think it's an eight or ten ounce canvas. It comes in sheets that are about four feet wide and I think about fourteen feet long. And it's not super heavy duty, but it's good, uh, and I was able to get it. That makes it even better. So what I'm going to do is make my own pack. Um, when you live in a remote spot like this, you, most of the people here are fairly handy at getting by with making or fixing or, uh, you know, MacGyvering up whatever they need or want, uh, simply because it's the easiest way to get it. Um, so most of the things I have, I have purchased um, parts or materials or something that's used that, that's been available and then made it into something better. Uh, I have a video on a boat that I did, which is actually, if you go to the link to Facebook, there's some pictures on there. Uh, and there'll be pictures of other projects and other projects as I do them that will be on the videos here. Um, anyways, so that's the plan for probably the next few days. If, uh, actually, if I could figure out how to weld this canvas, I'd be in a whole lot better shape. Because sewing is not something I do too often. But we'll manage. And uh, so I've, I've laid this out, I spared you the, the, the view of me cutting this because I'm crawling around on the floor to do it to get enough space. But now that it's up on the table, I'm kind of fitting it together in a, in a design that I want, getting the sizes uh, written down and so on. It's going to be um, first an inner pack made, uh, and the inner pack uh, is going to be doubled up and overlaid at the seams to, for strength. Uh, and then there's going to be an outer shell basically made of the same canvas which will also be double stitched or triple stitched everywhere and then the two will be joined together so that I'll have ultimately about three layers uh, of this canvas all stuck into um, into this pack so it's, it should be pretty tough um, I, I haven't quite decided if I want to wax it or go with the um, linseed oil mineral spirits mix it's, um, well, anyways, I've got time to decide that. Um, so anyways, uh, I've got it up here on the top now. I've just finished more or less pinning it together. Um, I didn't happen to have any pins right here with me, so I've taken the uh, clips here. These are the little clips that they use uh, for paper. Just the little paper clips there. You've probably seen those. Everybody sees them. And so I've used that to pin the material together temporarily just to get a layout. So what I'm going to do is uh, 
slurp down some of my coffee and then we'll get started. Okay, so as I said, I take these little clips and uh, I'm just kind of pinning this or clipping this together so I can just get a clearer picture in my mind, kind of a mock-up if you want, of how this is going to fit together and uh, just make sure that, I mean, now's the time if I'm going to change any ideas, this is the time to do it before I before I get into the stitching. So the idea is that the pack will be about 16 inches wide, 16 inches tall, and about 10 inches in width, approximately. Um, I might make it slightly narrower. I think I'm maybe almost going to seam this over a little bit heavier and make it 14 inches wide because as I said when I walk through the dense bush here um, it's pretty thick and by the time I put two side pockets on it I don't want the pack to be too much wider uh, than I am uh, it's just more chances of it snagging around there so what we're gonna do I think now is I've got some heavy duty upholstery thread, some good polyester thread uh, some new needles for my machine and so I'm going to get some proper pins and actually pin this together the way you would. Now what's happened is this there's an overlap here um, I, I might overlap it by a bit more but that's probably three inches and then these will fold, this will be the back and the front and so that'll fold up oops, something like this and the back will of course fold up these are the sides, they're uh, probably 12 inches wide because I want, like I said, I want a real good overlap so these will come up this way and there's enough length that when they get to the top there will be a little of a fold over so that they'll, they'll tuck under the, the cover when it folds over and that will help uh, just help seal it from any moisture or anything outside so the next thing I have to do is get this pinned in place and then I'll be back and we'll take a a stab at the sewing machine. We'll be back. Okay, let's carry on. I had a little trouble with the jam up on here so I had to make the first stitch or two, a couple of rows, um, without the camera on. So I'll just roll this up. This is quite long so we're gonna have to tuck it up here as we get it to go. is we're coming forward a little bit then we're backing up over top of it to lock the stitch then we're coming back forward again when we get all the way down through the line we'll do it again now I've got these pieces overlapping by 10 inches so I've got a stitch down here and a stitch down here with the locks at both ends and I'm going to do a couple more lines maybe at least this line and this one um, just to give it a little bit more thread. Let's bring that way up out of there. I'll have to get some fine scissors that are going to do a better job of this. So what I've got here is a pretty tight stitch with just the slightest, I guess I get down on the lens here, you can see that here, probably not just the slightest little bit of a zigzag in it 
but I kept the stitch right tight together. I wasn't really doing it for show, but I just wanted to spread the stitch over as much area as possible. So I guess we'll do, we do a couple more. Yeah, back there. Yeah, might as well. Okay, so let's see what we can do here a little bit more. up so that it fits through the the neck of this a little more and it doesn't sort of because what it tends to do is pull the fabric off to the side so as you're getting your stitch down it's going to drift off to the side and I'm trying to mark that with my fingers and then stitch something like this Clippers. I think we'll do one more. What happened here? Did we run out of? Where's the rest of our thread? Try and see if it works. Something's not working here. All right, well, we'll carry on here. We'll reduce the drag here, maybe just a little bit. It's pretty heavy fabric, and this isn't a heavy duty machine, so we'll carry on. I'll do a few more stitches. This, this would be tedious to leave it on indefinitely, so I'll be back when I get a bit more done. So what I'm doing is stitching the belt to the flap on the top and then the other piece will come from the bottom up. I think I'm going to have it come completely across the bottom. It'll just give it some extra support for any weight that's in there because there's lots of length to come up. And these also have a lot of length. My original thought was to put this point here where it splits up higher, just about flush here, perhaps all the way up. but. I like the idea that I've spread it out further here. If I could come up close, of course, they'd be right together. And this gives more width of the flap, uh, some contact for uh, whatever's in the pack. So I expect that'll probably keep it closed a little better. I'm getting the angles right. This is just a standard stitching all, which does a real good job of punching large holes in your fingers if you're not so you push it through, and then when you pull it back slightly, it creates a little loop. So you might see that better if I can get that back. If you can see it. But it actually creates a little loop when you pull it back just slightly, but don't pull the needle all the way out. What you do is you run your thread through that loop, and then you just hold on to it, you pull it tight, like that, and you've created basically a knot. So this can't possibly come undone. And you just repeat. So you put it in like that, push it right through, then just pull it back, leave this loose, pull it back like that, maybe just that much. And the friction of the uh, thread, and this is that wax nylon thread, the fr friction of the thread going through the leather and the material binds a little bit, so it causes it to pull back the loop, and that gives you something to lace through. It's almost like lacing, basically, sort of a saddle stitch type thing. And you just keep going, being very aware of your other fingers underneath. Pull it back a little bit, bring it through, pass it through. Once you work your way to the end, 
uh, you'll end up with a tag on this end down here somewhere. You'll end up with a tag here. When you pull, put, well, I'll show you when you get there, but when you push it through the last time, you snip it off. Get yourself a bit of slack, snip it off. So you end up with both tag ends on this side. When that happens, then you can just tie it off. Once I do that, because this is that heavy wax nylon thread, I, I do tie it off. Um, two or three, just plain overhand knots, nothing, nothing special. But then I go ahead and uh, just take my lighter and just kind of like you would a piece of paracord or something, and just just uh, give the ends of the two pieces to get the two pieces kind of twirled together a little bit, and then just kind of melt them together slightly. You know, it doesn't take much. You don't want to burn it all away, but and you see, I just like to give a little bit of a tug. You don't have to pull hard, but a little bit of a tug, and now. These tags are slightly longer than they need to be. So when I lace this other one, I cut it off. So what I want to do is count the stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 stitches. 1, 2, 5, 6, 7. This will be number 8. I get the same number on each side. I don't know that anybody would really notice, but I would. So we'll go ahead and do it back a little bit, tie it through, pull it out, give it a give it a nice tug. I like to get it, I like this stuff fairly tight. It's probably gonna come loose enough as it goes anyways. Through. So now if, the other thing you got and I, what I just did there is that at least you got to make sure you go straight down through because if you don't you want it to come through nice and close together on the back side so that you've just got a nice lacing in there and if you're not cautious you can end up with it coming through the other side you know more than a quarter of an inch away so you want to make sure you get it fairly vertical there so you can this is a pain the worst the other one's going to be worse because it's going to be stitched from inside at the very bottom of the bag and that's hard to see what you're doing so I won't be able to film that but probably won't be able to see it from myself when it comes right down to it but um, this will give you the idea the other the other one will be attached in identical fashion as this just uh, just on the bottom and it's not split this is an old uh, leather belt that was picked up at one of the second hand stores and I never really knew what I was going to have had it for quite some time. I never really know. I just, when I see something like that, I know it's got to be, you know, a, a piece of leather strap. I mean, it's got to be good for something. So I just grab that type of stuff. And I have a little bin here, and I keep it all kind of tacked away. And sooner or later, I'll come up with a plan for it. It's pretty sure. It might take a year. I've had this thing probably for maybe a couple of years now. Problem is, sometimes by the time I have a project I could use it on, I forgot I got it. Okay, so now we're coming to the end here. I'm pulling this tight all the way. So we're, we've pushed it through the last time. So we've got our loop here. Now instead of, well we're gonna loop through. We'll do that as, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna pull out a bit of extra slack here. Give us a nice tag that we can get our hands on easily. And there's our scissors. We're going to snip it off, off close, close to the needle, not down at the bottom. We won't have anything left. So snip it off at the top here, like that. We can pull our needle out. And now we have our two tag ends. We can just make sure we got it nice and snug. And just put two or three knots in it. Doesn't really matter, I guess. I like to put at least two or three just to be sure. One thing about making your own stuff is that since you did it and you know what you did, if it ever comes apart or gets damaged in the future, I mean, you know, this is going to be out. I think I've mentioned in a couple of my other videos that a lot of uh, my travels aren't really done on foot so much because the, just the nature of the land around here doesn't, doesn't allow for... There's so many beaver dams and swamps and so on that you can't walk in a straight line for 
more than a few hundred yards and then you have to walk way around a pond or a lake or a beaver swamp or whatever so um, most of my touring is done by conveyance which would be um, boats um, I have a canoe uh, as you see at the beginning of my video that's me uh, canoeing and uh, and at the end of the videos uh, all my videos the lead in and the lead out are pictures of me in canoes and just give that a little a little meltdown all right we're good perfect so I'll set that aside now oops there we go that will sit roughly like that that goes up equally on the middle there and we're done now on the bottom this is the bottom like this well, I've got lots of strap available somewhere let me grab it and we'll see how that works okay here's the other end of the belt you know I haven't split the end here I've punched some holes there because you can't push even that all is you just can't push it through the leather so I've punched some holes all the way around about that much well there it is right there you can see those holes to make it easier now as you can see here that will sit look like that and come down so I got lots and lots of straps so I'll probably cut some of this off so even if I go fully across the bottom and allow myself lots of room to get to the last hole so that if I really stuff this pack full I'm going to have to reset my holes because otherwise I'll go halfway up the back. So I think I need to cut that off about there. Man, that's buckets of it. The other nice thing about having it all the way across the bottom here is if I stitch it here at the back and then again here at the front but not in the middle, then I'll have a flap. I've got one here when I stitched on the, the, the side panels and uh, one here so if you needed to slide something in there um, to carry but this will give me a bit so I could actually tuck a a bed roll or something in there whatever I wanted to carry and then when I lace you know cinch this up nice and tight um, it would be single strap so it wouldn't be as secure but in a short term distance or whatever that would work so I'm going to cut that off Oh yeah, that's more than enough. Actually, even shorten that a little bit. About like that. I want to be able to just reach. About. Give it a little bit more. We can always. Okay, right there. All right. So this is going to take a few minutes. I can cut this off right here. But I'm going to have to go and get an awl and punch the holes in here manually, and that, that takes quite a bit of time. I may not do that right now. Some like nice scissors. There we go. I'll save that. Don't need those anymore. Okay, so I'm, I've just shortened this up a little bit to make it good. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to put just a short bit of stitching on the back. Um, this doesn't really have to be particularly strong because it's... You don't have to stitch it all the way across because it is just really holding the flap on and perhaps a, a, a blanket roll or something under here. So if I stitch it here with maybe, you know, six or eight stitches up each side and, and around and then the same thing at the front edge just to give it that that loop in the middle, um, that should be, I mean, this, this, this is triple layer thick on the bottom here That's and it's been um, linseed oiled and waxed. So that's that's pretty strong. That's not going to... The reason I built such a big pack isn't because I carry a ton of things or, or a great deal of weight or whatever. It's just that um, most of my gear like this is fairly old old school. Um, I like old school things. So because of that, it's, it's fairly bulky. Um, you know, you can get all these fancy little sleeping bags and, and, you know, they roll up and they stuff into a little sack the size of your lunchbox um, or smaller. In a lot of cases, you can put... Um, fold up everything in packs nowadays um, I can't help but wonder how I guess if the quality of the material is good enough 
Um, the durability, even on small items, will be still very good. But um, first off, where I live here, it's not easy to buy any of that stuff. You have to order it on Amazon or whatever because there, there are no shops in hundreds and hundreds of miles um, that would carry that type of materials. Also, it, you know, that's the kind of thing that you kind of want to hold in your hand and get a, get a feel for it. So um, when you can't do that, let's see if we can get you up here a little bit. When you can't do that, there. When you can't hold it in your hand and you know kind of get a grip on it, um, see how it feels in your hand. It's not the, the necessarily that the quality of one will be better than the quality of another one, but you know sometimes they just. I got big hands. Sometimes they just fit your hands better. They fit the balance better. It, it's all personal. So I don't have the opportunity to do that. So I make a lot of my own gear. Um, and again, you know most of my gear is sort of an old school style. I like it that way. And because of that, it's bulkier. So a bigger pack won't necessarily carry more different types of items. They'll just be bigger. Anyways, so I'll come back uh, probably tomorrow. Whenever I get this, um, I'll just measure the distance I need here. I'll go and punch the holes through there with an awl. Um, I'll hammer them through actually. That's pretty solid leather, this stuff. And uh, I'll come back and we'll we'll get back together and it's going to be a bit more of the same. I don't know actually how much of it you'll see because I'm going to be pushing it all through here, but I got to reach way inside the pack and and look down and punch the little, you know, lace the little line through. So I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to film that or not. You I can film it, but you won't see anything anyways. Anyway, we'll come back at the next level. See you shortly. Okay, so this last stage of this will be to, I made this, uh, this is just a bit of hemp string, and what I've done is I've taken it, and I've taken three of them and braided it, just to give it a bit more strength, not just a tie, I don't know that it really needs to be real strong, but it, it looked a little bit, didn't look proportionate to being in here, it looked a bit too small, so I'm going to do this. Now what I didn't do is put any grommets in the back and I just left that out. That had been part of a plan originally, which I no longer like. So what I'm going to do, and actually I didn't film putting in the grommets for whatever reason, so I'm going to do that now. So we're going to put a couple of grommets in here. We're going to take a block of wood. We're going to set this up. Gives us something to beat on. Now these are only just a very short way down. We're going to try and duplicate that pretty much. That's through here. So what you do, we won't need this little piece of wood that they give you here because we're using this great big block of wood. If you were working on a good sturdy metal bench, workbench or something, then you could use this this is basically the stop so that when you're be beating on your little uh, cutter you don't beat the tar out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one of these right there and you go right through both layers. It doesn't take much. These things work pretty good so we just Knock it through. Well, okay. I didn't get it quite. Must have a little roll in the block. So. There. Oh, come on. See, if I wasn't videoing this, it would be a piece of cake. There we go. Cuts it out. Cuts it out cleanly, believe it or not. Then we take our grommets. There's two parts. There's the little washer part and there's the part with the stem. So the part with the stem goes from behind and comes up through the hole we just made right there. You see it's you see it, yeah, you can see it sticking up there a little bit. Now this has a side where it's a little bit indented and on the other side of course it's rounded out a little bit. That rounded out part goes up where we can see it. So we just put that down nicely over there, just kind of like a washer. And we take, actually, 
I should have, this would have been easier to, I'm going to show you this after here on the next one. Because it's a bit, yeah, that's not going to show you very well. And then we take the anvil, which right at the moment is stuck in the package. There. Okay. So we make sure that we're sitting on that. We stick the anvil through the hole. We give it a couple of whacks. And what that does is it crushes down that uh, high spot and it locks that ribbon on. What the part you couldn't see here, then we're going to do this again. So when we take this part with the stem on it, this will go on the piece of wood like this, and this has a, a shape right in here, it's slightly grooved, and it fits so that that sits right in there, and it, it sits in there reasonably securely, it's not tight. So that actually sits like that, and that's the, uh, the anvil part, and then when you use this part, you put your washer over, you use this part, and, and it presses this down over that sticking up shaft part, but it punches out or flattens out that that high spot there and when it does that it it just crimps it right onto the to the washer so we're going to do one more Let's see if we can do it in a way that's a little clearer for you to see so we lay this out we find our cutter we make our location about there and it out. Oh, we really nailed it on that one. Okay, and part of the wood. Now, this is where we take this dog hair, pets, uh, put it on that anvil. It, it won't stay in there, so you've got to keep it on with your finger a little bit. We'll lift it up here, and we'll just put it through from behind. We make sure that it stays on that anvil properly. We put this with the roll facing up. Yep, facing up, and then we put on our driver there, and you don't have to whale on it, and there you go. And that's all there is to that. That's, you know, you buy these kits, and you can buy replacement uh, refills and everything, and they work pretty good, and eventually, you'll have to poke the, it's hollow, it's just a hollow tube with, a, with an edge cut on one end, uh, so you just have to get something and poke out the, the bits of this in this case this canvas material so it just comes out and you just take a well pencil or whatever fits through there and poke that out and that is all there is to it and then we'll lace this back in and well, that's all there is to it and that's going to be that's going to be John done I had, it's certainly understandable why it costs so much to, of course they don't probably make them literally by hand, as I've made this one, they would have ways of jigging it up and um, obviously they'll have patterns all pre-made where they just cut out hundreds of these at a time, but uh, you know, it's quite a lot of work. This is take, and you know, part of the problem is I've never made one before, so you know, if I made another one now, the trick, the worst trick is uh, determining which way to put it into the sewing machine. You may have to sew two or three things in a kind of what would seem like a reverse order, but if you sew it the other way around, then you, you can't get at it. And then, so some of this has been hand-stitched uh, just because I couldn't get to the spot where I needed to be. But that's it. We're looking good. So this is our, our way of tying up now. And this... I put little flaps on the sides. I did that rather than putting the flaps on here because I didn't want these to be in the way. When I flip this back, it's just completely out of the way. But it sits down over the sides by about, well, you can see here by, uh, what, five, four, five inches, five, yeah, about five inches. So once this is laced up and that's flipped over and tied on with, with the uh, closure, it's going to be pretty waterproof, water resistant. 
uh, as far as rain goes. So there we go. One more step in the in the process. It's been a long process. I don't really know how many hours I've got into it so far. Um, I haven't kept track of it. It's been quite a few days, you know, a couple hours here, an hour there, three hours some other time. But, uh, and as a first attempt without a real pattern, and, and the sewing machine just isn't definitely not heavy enough to, to stitch through this stuff. So uh, that was a bit tough. It would go through and then it would bind up and um, I'd have to stop and then jam it. So, you know, it was a bit of a, a torture test at times, but there's quite a few hours into it. But, you know, I enjoyed it. So that's the main thing. All right, well, we'll carry on and uh, I'll catch back up with you when I get the next level done. Uh, and then we'll, we're pretty close. We'll be taking it outside and seeing how it works pretty soon. Catch up with you shortly. Okay, well, this project started around the 18th or 19th of April when there was still probably that much snow out here. It's now, I think, the 2nd or 3rd of June, but the backpack is finally pretty much finished. It's, uh, it measures out to about 41 liters, and it's just one big open bag. I did put a pocket on this side. And it's just a big open pocket, just one big open pocket. And uh, I can put my folding saw in there and any other uh, cup, maybe a thermos or something like that that, that needs to be fairly long and not terribly big around. It's uh, double, double thick everywhere, triple thick on the bottom. I think what I'm probably going to do is put uh, another pocket on the side here. <laughs> And it's just going to be the size of the side, just, just down like that, just in the cup. If you can see that properly, there we go a little bit better. And, and open at the top here. And that way I can put, uh, put the head of my forest axe in there and then just tie the handle up here so it doesn't bounce around. But also there's an awful lot of bears around here, um, wolves, wolverines, you name it. So mama bears at this time of year with cubs are uh, known to be kind of grumpy. So there are times when I might just stick a, the butt end of a firearm down in there and tie the barrel off up here just to keep it from bouncing around. But uh, what I ended up doing is I soaked it fairly well with the linseed oil and spirit mix, mineral spirits. Um, that worked pretty good. You can feel the stiffness of it. It's definitely thickened it up a bit. Now it's double thick everywhere and triple on the bottom. So when I, when I got this pretty soaked with that stuff, um, it hung outside for probably close to 10 days before it was really dry enough to properly handle. Now, some of those days were sunny, but some of them were basically kind of skeeters, uh, kind of damp and so on. So it didn't dry as fast as it could, but that was probably slightly over two weeks ago. Well, you can still smell it a little bit, so it's not bad though. Uh, certainly you can take it in the house without having to smell like paint anymore or that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, that's it for this. It was a long project and uh, sewing was definitely not something that I do much. I've sewed little curtains before and so on, but um, not anything like this. And my sewing machine just wasn't nearly heavy duty enough to really uh, go through this canvas. But you know, we got it done. I had to stitch it by hand in a few spots. But I want to thank you for watching. Uh, if it's something that you enjoy, please share it with friends. Uh, if you have any other comments or any suggestions, please be free to leave them. Uh, in the box below and uh, any suggestions on something else you might want to see. Uh, the bug season is pretty much getting close to full swing here and it gets pretty pretty gnarly but uh, we'll be out as much as we can. I'm doped up with bug spray right now. I kind of hate using that but you know you just you just can't come out here if you don't you'd be swarmed. Um, anyway thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you again on the next next project. Thank you.